Good day, this is Dr. Naveen Alexander and welcome to Ra Online. Today's topic will be on surgical infections. So this I have adapted directly from Bailey and Love. What are the learning objectives? Is to identify the characteristics of the different pathogens that can happen. The factors that whether a wound will become infected or will get better. The classification of sources of in, uh, infection in the severity. The presentation of infections the choices and the indications for prophylactic antibiotics, the spectrum of commonly used antibiotics in surgery and the principles of their chemotherapy. Right? So this is what we are going to be aiming at. So going through and uh, always I keep saying this, where we are right now is because we are standing on the shoulders of giants, is a brief walk through time. So surgical infections have been um, and so soft tissue infections have been documented from minimum 4,000 to 5,000 years. And uh, the Egyptians uh, brought about the mummification system and papyruses were noted to have salves and uh, other ointments to uh, bring down the infective rates. Prophylaxis was brought down, noted down by the Assyrians and the Greeks. Hippocrates uh, of the famous Hippocratic Oath advocated the use of wine and vinegar to clean out surgical wounds and well as traumatic wounds at war. The Romans believed that drainage of infections was very, very important. Galen of uh, fame of the ancient world, he said there was something known as the pus bonum at laudable. Basically, what it means is that it's good and laudable pus, that if pus was there, it was a good sign. And we know that it is a very, very uh, wrong statement many, many centuries later. Uh, Ambroise Pare, who was a big name in the early um, clean amputations era, advocated primary closure of clean wounds. Also, by the same thought that if the wound was dirty, not to do a primary closure. Uh, when the microscope was invented, that was a big boost at the identification of the pathogens that were causing the infections. This brought about Robert Cox's postulates, whether a given organism is the cause of a given disease. And you know these postulates from your MBBS days. So these are the names that you will need to know. You have uh, Lister, you have uh, Pasteur, you have, you have Robert Cox who were this is, this is, of course, Alexander Fleming with a very famous photograph of his Petri dish identifying penicillin. So, definitions and etiologies. Soft tissues were first defined slightly more than a century ago. And in 1883, the famous Fournier's gangrene was first described as a gangrenous infection of the scrotum. Very similar synergistic gangrene of the anterior abdominal wall was first documented by Melanie in 1924. Shortly thereafter, he did, um, with his friend Brewer, described the progressive polymicrobial synergistic gangrene. And the association between toxic shock syndrome was delineated as this disease re-emerged in the 1980s due to the use of tampons. So, diverse group of diseases that involve the skin and underlying subcutaneous tissue, fascia or muscle, it might be localized to a small area as well as a large portion of the body. It can affect any part of the body, but the most common are the lower extremities, the perineum and the anterior abdominal wall. Most are relatively harmless if treated promptly and adequately, but others can be life-threatening in spite of good management. So, continuing into the definitions, you have simple versus complex infections, primary versus secondary versus tertiary, cellulitis versus Abscess, superficial infections versus deep, necrotizing fasciitis versus non necrotizing, traumatic versus non traumatic. Right? So, the classic syndromes that are discussed in soft tissue syndromes are rapidly progressive infections, toxic shock syndromes. Right? So, non traumatic is usually spontaneous, it's usually mainly due to glandular infection. We all know all these are very, very simple things to handle. Folliculitis, frunculosis, carbuncles, hydradenitis, aperitiva, perianal and perineal infections. And the other would be 
due to microtrauma, small lacerations and cuts, and insect bites. So all wounds should be classified. And what is the classification for this? Is clean, clean contaminated, contaminated, and dirty. And these are good examples for each of these. Clean, you would have your hernia repairs, your breast biopsies. For clean contaminated, an elective cholecystectomy or an elective bowel resection. Contaminated would be an emergency bowel resection or a gangrene gallbladder for that matter, right? And dirty would be a perforated colon or a proper abscess per se. Now, if you look at it, an uninfected operative wound in which there is no inflammation, that is a clean wound. A contaminated where is you have invasion of the respiratory, alimentary, genital or the urinary tracts, but these are under control conditions and there is no unusual contamination. Contamination is open, fresh and accidental wounds where there is a major break in sterile technique, right? And dirty wounds, you will know that it's usually due to traumatic wounds with retained or devitalized tissue or involving an existing clinical infection or perforation. So what are the symptoms and signs of a soft tissue infection? So you know pain is going to be there, you know, rubber, callor, dollar, tumor, all of these signs of inflammation are definitely going to be there. So you have erythema and edema leading to swelling. You can have blisters and clustered plaques on the surface of the skin. You can have epidermal erosion and necrosis. Or you can have even stuff like fluctuation and crepitus, crackling of the subcutaneous tissue or patient having full-blown features of septicemia with fever, tachycardia, hypertension and multi-organ failure. Right, so we're just revisiting the levels of the skin and the subcutaneous tissue. So here you have the epidermis, then the two parts of the dermis, the papillary and the reticular. Then you have the superficial fascia, you have the subcutaneous tissue, then you have the deep fascia and of course below that would be the muscle. Right, okay, so now if you had a case of a folliculitis, technically that would come at this level. Right, if you had a patient who's got a sebaceous cyst that arises from this level. Right, so all these are important to know because then you would know how deep your infection is actually starting from. Right. <music>